The way you score in a game of tennis is decidedly odd. When you scored no points, you call that love. And if you win one ball, you call that 15. I leave explaining the rest of the rules of tennis to Wikipedia. Let's just say it has a long and rich history and nobody really knows why the scoring works like it does. It's kind of like Hungarian notation or two digit years. Must have made sense at the time. The tennis refactoring carter is a bit similar to the Gilded Rose Carter, which I talked about in a previous video. And if you like that one, I think you'll like this carter too. In fact, the tennis refactoring carter is actually several exercises all rolled into one. Lots of different refactoring challenges, weird code to decipher, and it comes with a fantastic safety net of fast, reliable tests. So you really can go wild with the code and your refactoring tools and you'll know as soon as you break anything. Believe me, if you're not generally used to working with that kind of fast feedback, you're in for a treat. Hi, I'm Emily Bates, software developer and creator of Saman Coaching. On my channel, you can find content for technical coaches and developers. If you like what you see here, please hit like and subscribe. So this is the scenario. Imagine you work for a consultancy company and one of your colleagues has been doing some work for the Tennis Society. The contract is for 10 hours of billable work and your colleague has spent about eight and a half working on it. Unfortunately, he's fallen ill, but he says he's completed the work and the tests all pass. Your boss has asked you to take over. She wants you to spend an hour or so on the code so she can bill the client for the full 10 hours. She instructs you to tidy up the code a little and perhaps make some notes so you can give your colleague some feedback on his chosen design. So, go wild. It already works, it has tests, your colleague is waiting for your feedback. Let's have a look at this code. So when you open up the code repository, you'll find several numbered classes or modules named Tennis Game. Originally there were three, but in some language versions I've got six. It turns out there are a lot of ways to implement tennis scoring, some of them more sensible than others. For historical reasons, the order they appear in isn't necessarily the order you should do them in. I showed a working solution to Tennis 3 in my recent video, Refactoring What You Need to Know. And I think that's the easiest one to begin with. It has lots of mysterious names you can fix. After that, I recommend Tennis 6, that one has lots of scope for practicing extract method. Tennis one also has that, but the duplication is a little bit more subtle and it's got this really mad for loop. Tennis two is pretty fiendish, loads of duplication. Tennis four is completely different. It goes overboard on a design pattern. And tennis five, it's just weird. The code was invented largely by ChatGPT. ChatGPT isn't the only contributor, actually. Some of the genius here is from my friend Nitsan Avni. However, I've concocted most of these tennis variants myself, with inspiration from some of the many students I've had over the years. When I teach test-driven development, I often give tennis as an exercise, since it's so easy to write good tests for it. And sometimes, my students come up with very surprising code that actually works. So that's kind of what this is about. If a junior programmer comes up with code that works, but is a less than brilliant design, how do you handle that? And how do you explain to the boss that it's worthwhile spending additional time improving it when it already works and has tests? I think this is a really fun refactoring exercise. It's small, there are good tests, and the code can really only get better. Just experiencing what it's like to have these fast, good tests can be a revelation. I think you should try it. Happy coding. <laughs>